Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to Jamie Photography. So this is a relatively short video, but I just wanted to show you a little technique that I found with the AI generative fill function that really, really helps uh, me with my workflow. This is a shot I took in Paris a couple of weeks ago. I've already post-processed it, got it to where I want it to be, but the water, um, as it was shot at 1 40th of a second, really isn't um, particularly smooth and I would have needed to have had my tripod and uh, and tried to shoot for a, for a longer exposure but it was quite bright as you can see so I would have also needed an, an ND filter to allow me to get down to 10 or 20 or even 30 seconds to get that smooth water effect but in doing so we'd also lose the clarity in the sky the sky would be drawn as well so let me just show you a little 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 trick that I, I've learned here um, what I'm going to do is going to take this image now and just throw it over to uh, Adobe Photoshop Beta. So I right click, I go to Edit In, and I go over to Adobe Photoshop Beta. Include the adjustments here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go over into Photoshop. There we go. And I'm just going to click Fill Screen here. I want to try to get as much of this as possible. Now, to make a selection of the water, you can use the lasso. In doing so, you, it's down to how steady your hand is to the edge. But one of the things I do like to do is use the, the polygon lasso tool. This is really good because you can do straight lines. So we're going to select that. We can make a start anywhere we like. I'm going to start over here on the left. And I'm just going to click and run along the very edge of the water line. I'm going to make sure I, I keep the bridge shadow in the shot because that's important that we do that i'm just going to come across there to the edge of this this boat here down down here and i'm just trying to stay relatively close because i want to capture as much of the water as possible in uh, because of course that's what we're aiming to do is is to make this water smooth so so just clicking round, working my way around to the wall here straight line down you can click off off the shot as well with the lasso tool you can click here look for example and then i can make a selection that includes all of the water and then back to where we started so we have now got a selection as you can see generative fills come up in the box which is in the window that is called the contextual taskbar uh, if you don't see that you can always tick it here in this menu and that will uh, that will bring it up so i'm just going to click generative fill now i'm not going to write smooth water I'm not going to do anything i'm going to let the ai decide how best to deal with this so I'm just going to go straight forward to generate and whilst it's generating there we can uh, we can just have a, a brief look at the shot we have here in paris it was a wonderful evening i have to say beautiful atmosphere i was there with a very good friend of mine bill bolsh and uh, we had a we had a great time in paris during one of my workshops lovely evening so here we go let's see what it's come up with okay there's the first there's the first one it's come up with it it's kept some of that that sort of clarity in the water here and, it, and it's given us almost a lee effect if you like over here which looks very nice let's try the second alternative so that's not so good it's darkened it down uh, quite a lot so then let's have a look at the third the third option again not brilliant but it is a bit darker over here a little bit over this way so i think in this case number one is the better one but we want it smoother than that so let's generate again ask it to have another go at what it thinks would be the best way to smooth out this water so giving it a moment remember it sends the information off to the cloud adobe servers process the information send it back uh, and then we bring it back in now one thing to remember with generative fill at the moment in beta it is only relatively low resolution. It's only around about 1080. So the bigger selection you make, uh, the less pixels that you're going to have. Um, and this image here is a 61 megapixel image. So if I zoom in very close on this, you'd see that it is a little bit blurry. So just bear that in mind that you don't want to do huge proportions of the screen at the moment. Hopefully they'll, they will um, give us a more advanced process once it moves over into Photoshop and maybe we get a much higher resolution or it does a tile effect when it renders but let's see so here we go this is uh, the next group so that one's not too bad that one's not much different from the original and uh, there we go that one's a lot better and we're getting a bit of sunlight coming in over here so I'm going to say I like that one 
what we're doing we're just giving adobe some feedback on on what it's done i'm not going to give any feedback on that one it's not too bad that one i don't like that one so let's take us back to the one that we liked that wasn't a very good effect so i don't like that one either so i think it was this one the third yeah there we go so very happy with that we're just going to have to sort the colors out here to match the sky but we'll do that back in back in lightroom happy with that i'm just going to bring these two layers together so i'm just going to hold down the shift key click on the one that's not illuminated right click merge layers then i'll go to file cl close and then save and that will put it back put it back to lightroom there we go so just to fix this color down here what we're going to do go into mask take a linear gradient and i'm just going to take a little gradient that cuts across here like that just brings it up and we just need to increase the magenta a little bit in there just to match that color not too much because it will reflect on the blue over here and i'm just going to bring up that just a little bit desaturate ever so slightly there we go and that's that's pretty close just gonna bring that magenta up a little bit more just to try to get that color to match perfectly i can sort the blue out in a second i'll just uh, yeah i think that's getting close to being roughly the same color happy with that so the blue there has got a bit too much magenta in it so what we can do is subtract a brush make sure the flow is around about sort of 30 40 percent the feather is at a hundred percent so we can just get a nice little blend out there and bear in mind we're subtracting this so we're just going to take it away from over here just work our way into this image here just just stroking that away just to get rid of that magenta that's that we were seeing in there if i hover over the mask you can see there's ever so slight reduction there but we're going to take a little bit more in fact we can increase the flow a little bit more just take it out over here go so have a look that's looking much better we've got that color of the sky in there and we've got this over here now i do want to emphasize the sun's reflection as it was before in the water so um, i'm just going to go create a new mask i'm going to take a radial gradient here i'm just going to make a selection which is sort of similar width to the sun up there i'm just going to brighten brighten that up slightly just going to brighten that up so we've got the same effect, just a little bit there. Uh, add a little bit of magenta into that and a little bit of uh, temp. That's looking okay. Let's come over just slightly, that's it. I'm gonna right click, duplicate the mask, and I'm just gonna put a slightly smaller one in that's drawn out slightly because the sun always gets slightly drawn as we saw in the in the previous reflection. Let's just have a look, see what that looks like. Let's come out and mask a second. It's not too bad but it's just a little bit too bright so i'm just going to bring that down ever so slightly there we go i'm just going to add a little bit of clarity to that as well just to just to make it blend into the water a little bit better and a little bit more of temp let's have a look yeah that's much better that's where we want to be so we've 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 now effectively smoothened out that water quite a lot compared to where we were did so that's where we were yeah this where we got to pretty happy with that that you can add more if you do the generative fill again over the same you can get this one here which which i'm showing which gets even smoother and and the same thing you can always add in your sun over here reflection just on the water there just to make it work very well so hopefully you uh you enjoyed that just short video this time but just to show you that you can use the generative fill function to smooth the water if you didn't have the opportunity to have your tripod with you or an nd filter you were able to uh, just smoothen it just a little bit to take away a little bit of that sort of high contrast high clarity that we had in the shot yeah if you enjoyed this short video please please like that would be great um, if you haven't already uh, subscribed it'd be great for you to join my adventure here on uh, on youtube I'm having a great time enjoying what i'm doing uh, sharing all of my ideas with you and it's great to see the comments and questions that i get back and and people also give me some pointers how i can improve in different areas and i i really appreciate people taking the time to do that because it helps my skill base uh, and i can also share that information with all of you so, yeah for now nice short video but uh bye bye